set aside one day a year to honor the mothers. One day a year. And uh, I think we ought to do it more often. I think we ought to honor our, our mothers, our ladies in our life. I think we ought to honor them every day because they are very special. My, my wife is very special to me. My mama, she's still living. She's very special to me. And so we ought to honor them. And the Scripture tells us of all many mothers in the Scripture, Abraham Lincoln said this, No man is poor who has a godly mother. No man is poor who has a godly mother. So uh, there's a lot to be said for godly women, for women that will raise their children, mamas that will raise their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And we find here that in the Scripture we find there are bad mothers and we find that there are good mothers. There are those that uh, had good morals, they were good Good people, godly women, and then there are those in the Scripture that are evil and wicked. Just like it is today, we find the same scenarios today. Women that are mothers that are, are uh, good moral people, godly people, and then we find those that are wicked and evil and don't care a whole lot about their children. The bad mothers in Scripture, I'll give you just uh, three of those real quickly. And was one of them was, one of them was Cain. Uh, Cain's wife was a bad mother. She followed a wicked man leading her children in the same direction. Lot's wife, uh, she was a bad mother. She looked back when she wasn't supposed to, and she uh, uh, turned to a pillar of salt, and then we find that her daughters uh, did some evil and wicked things. She wasn't a good mother. Uh, in 2 Kings chapter number 7, there were two women that conspired to eat their children. And you read it, it's there. Two women that conspired to eat their children. And that is very barbaric. I would not call them good mamas, would you? And then in 2 Kings chapter 11, Athela, uh, she killed all the seed royal. And you know what that means? That means she killed her children and she killed her grandchildren. And so just because for... Uh, the sake of royalty, she had all those killed off. Now, that's pretty wicked, isn't it? I'm glad none of them was my mama. Now, we have others in Scripture that are this, Eve. Uh, she and her husband, Adam, uh, they taught Cain and Abel how that they were to worship God. And that's what we need. We need mamas that'll, that will uh, teach their children how to worship God. It's important. And... Uh, Exodus chapter 2, where we're going to read in just a minute, we find Jochebed, Moses' mother. She taught Moses the principles of holiness, yet she never lived to actually see that happen in his life, but she taught him the principles of, of holiness. And 2 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah, the mother of Samuel, we know how Samuel grew up and how that he became a great man of God because Hannah gave him to the Lord. In 2 Kings chapter, uh, chapter 11, Jehosheba, she was not a mother, and we have those today. There were some ladies that came to our fellowship this morning, and we always make that available for the ladies. And I told them, I said, you may have never had a child, but I'm sure you've been a mother to somebody. And friend, I'm telling you, I, I know people that uh, I had family that was, when my mama wasn't around, uh, they acted as my mama because if I didn't do what they wanted, I got a blessing. Amen. And that was the way it was up Sugar Cove. If somebody was misbehaving where I grew up, they's liable to get a they's liable to get a whipping from somebody else's parents. But now we'd never have that. No, no, no. I'll discipline my children. I understand that uh, the way it is today. But uh, one day, my my brother, my mama was after my brother and my cousin, and they looked they looked just alike. You couldn't tell the difference at him from behind. And so my mama was going to give my brother what for, so she grabbed him and wore him out and turned him around, and it was my cousin. <laughs> she said, you probably needed that anyway. I don't know if my brother ever got it or not, but I know. But, hey, you know, we need people that, that uh, will help us in being moms. And I'm sure some of these ladies, even though Jehoshaphat, uh, she was not a mother, but she acted like one and uh, saved Joash from Athela and, and hid him six years in the Lord's house. 
And then we see Luke and Elizabeth and Mary, and the mother of John the Baptist. We see all these as, as good mothers. So there's more good in Scripture than there is bad. But we come to this person called Jochebed in, in Exodus chapter number 2. Let's read that. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Now, before I get to read, let me tell you what the story of the setting is. Uh, Pharaoh had ordered that all the baby boys be killed because they were going to grow and get mightier than the, than the Egyptians. And then if, a, if an enemy came along, they were afraid that the Israelites would fall in with the enemy to defeat Egypt. So he said, we're going to kill all the, all the baby boys off. So here's where we're at. Here's the setting. So, uh, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a godly, a goodly child, she hid him three months. How did she hide a three-month-old baby? How did she hide him without anybody knowing that young one was around? Mine screamed for three months. I mean, they mine screamed for three months. Solid, it seemed like. There was no sleep. <clears throat> there was nothing, you know, nothing that, that uh, we could do sometimes to quiet them down. My wife get a hold of them, they just coo at her, and, and they get so quiet when she would, I pick them up and they'd scream. So I don't know how she, and I, that's been a question to me, how that, how that she hid that child for three months, but she did. And when she could no longer hide him, now, you think about this, this, you're three months old, we don't have, do we have a three month old here? Pretty close, how old's that young? Six months, that's close enough. Could you do what Jochebed did to your child, and you think about it? Now, Jochebed, she took little baby Moses, who she hid for three months, and then it got so big she had to do something because she was afraid that it would be found out and, and uh, little baby Moses would be killed. So she went out and she got a bunch of, a bunch of reeds and a bunch of, of straw, and she wove a little ark, a little boat, for the three-month-old. It'd be a pretty good size, wouldn't it? So she... And uh, God had to be in all of this because she wove that and she put it all together and she made it where it, you know, she put pitch in it. Well, let me read you the story. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. So she put the little baby in the little you know, the, in the little uh, box, in the little ark that she built, and she took him down. There. Now, the Nile is a river infested with piranhas and crocodiles and big old man eating fish. But she took that little baby and put him down there in the reeds because she didn't know what else to do. But God had a plan in this all the time. Now, Moses' mother was who? Jochebed. That was, Mo that was Moses' mother. So we don't read about her, but, but right here and in a couple other places, all we know about Jochebed. But how God works this thing is this. She put him down there, and by chance, no, by, by the hand of the Lord, here's what happened. And his sister, whose sister? Moses' sister. Moses' sister. Stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. I just see her walking up there, and maybe, maybe, maybe Moses, maybe he cried a little bit. But whatever it was, something attracted her attention to that ark. Maybe God just said, "There, go," you know, pointed her to that, and she didn't know it. And she said, go get that, whatever that is down there, go get it and bring it up here to me. And so she went to fetch it, and when she had opened it, <clears throat> she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. So she knew immediately who it was. She said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister, there's the sister that he'd been watching. She comes on the scene. Moses' sister, and said, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? Now, 
why this happened, Jose, Josephus, this historian, says that many times they would try to find, if they found a child like that, they would try to find someone in their family to nurse the child. But the hand of God was on this because they couldn't find anyone. And so that's when the sister stepped up and said, well, can I go and get some of the Hebrew lady, one of the Hebrew ladies to come and nurse this child? And here's what she said. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called Moses' mother, called the child's mother, Jochebed. And uh, she came and Pharaoh's, daughter, uh, or, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Jochebed, Moses' mother, took Moses and nursed Moses, her child, that she loved dearly, that was a goodly child, and nursed and raised that child and received wages, got paid to raise her youngin'. All you ladies say amen. That'd be a good deal, wouldn't it? Because you all aren't paid enough. When you raise your children, I'm, you know, I'm very leery of people that say it's my wife stays home and she don't work. Don't ever say that to me. Because I tell you, they're worth about, if they got paid what they was worth, they'd be worth about $30 an hour for all the multitasking that they can do and that they do do. So you listen. You hold your wife and your mom in high esteem for all the things that they do for you and all the ways they take care of you. And children, anytime you can help mama, you little ones listen to me, you children listen to me. If you're 30 years or younger, amen, you listen to me. And the older ones, it won't hurt you either. But the little ones especially, the children especially, if mama needs help and you can help mama, you help your mother. You hear me? You help your mother. And you treat her the way that you would like to be treated because your mother loves you and she would give her life to protect you. She would do anything she could to protect her child. You don't want to mess, you know, a couple of things you don't want to mess with, and that's a bear with cubs and a mama with children. I think I'd rather face the bear with cubs. But here's Jochebed, the, uh, one of the great mothers in Scripture, how that she wound up by obeying God rather than men. She wound up nursing her own child, raising her own child. Pharaoh said she'd be killed. She raised him and got wages for it. And uh, verse 10, And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. So when he got, when he got old enough, uh, she took him and he became uh, Pharaoh's daughter, but he, remember on in Scripture, and I'm not going to get to all that, but remember on over in Scripture, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He never could forget his mama. Never did Moses forget his mother. Now again, I don't know what what you know what else become of that, but uh, you you read the story and you'll find out she never lived to see the results of what God did with Moses. So let me give you a few things about her. She was an Israelite. She was one of God's chosen people. This is who she was. She was one of God's chosen people. Uh, her husband was Amram, and together they were willing to defy Pharaoh to save their child's life. Now, I believe in obeying the laws of the land, mostly. The speed limit is kind of an iffy thing with me. I obey the law, but not to the letter of the law. And I'll just tell you right up. And, I, and everybody, everybody in here is that way. Amen? But I'll admit it, you might not. But I try to obey the laws of the land and do what I'm supposed to do. But if there comes a time where the laws of man are in opposition to the laws of God, we as the people of God have the responsibility to obey God rather than man. And that's exactly what Amram and Jochebed did. They determined that they were going to obey God 
and not obey man and have their little boy killed. Can you imagine doing such a thing? Can you imagine having your child killed? I mean, the, the, he, the midwives of the Hebrew children, that's what Pharaoh told them, said, you kill every man child that's born. And they didn't do it because they feared God rather than man. They feared God. And they made up the excuse, look, when, by the time we get there, uh, they're already delivered of a child. And, and uh, uh, you know, they know what it is and we can't do anything about it. So they tried their hardest. They even went to the place of, of putting the, uh, you know, putting the, the wives of, of the Israelites that were about to have a child, they put them in a place so they could watch them in trying to destroy God's people. But the devil's always been against God's people. And so that's what they were trying to do. But they had rather obey God than man, so they hid Moses. Then we see that she had a personal relationship with the Lord. How do you know that? Because she knew what was right for her to do with her child and God. Now, moms, let me tell you something today. There's things that you should know that you must do in order to raise your child godly. We're living in a world where godliness Godly people are getting further and further apart. Now, I'm not talking about just raising your child to come to church occasionally. I'm talking about raising them as godly children, praying for them every day, taking them to the Lord in prayer every day, having a burden for them that when they get of age of accountability that God will save them by His grace. We should train up our children and dad, you got as much a part in this as mama. You'll, you'll get it on daddy's day. Amen. But listen, mom, you must love your children. You must care for your children. And you must raise them in a godly fashion. But to do that, you yourself must have a relationship with the Lord. You've got to know what he wants for your life so that you can lead your children. Every child that's born deserves a godly mother that has a relationship with God. We see very little of that in our society. I see where I work, I see all kinds of, of moms that come in and they don't raise their children. I don't know what you would call what they do with them. They let them raise themselves. But I guess they just kind of chaperone them through life. And I've watched them as their kids have gotten older and, and the ones that are raising their children that way, the meaner the children are getting. And the more of a fit they pitch when they don't get what they want. Now my mama wasn't afraid to tell me no. And I knew what it meant when mama said no. Oh, I might try it a time or two, but when that final no came, I knew when that final no was and I didn't try that no more. Listen, friend, we need... Godly mothers that will raise their children in a godly life. Number two, we see that who she was, and now we see the confidence that she had. She had confidence. See, she saw that he was a goodly child. Remember that. And she had confidence that Moses would be raised up and that when he got older, that he would do something mighty for the Lord. I believe she knew that, and I believe she, she believed that in herself. She believed God. She had enough confidence in God to believe God. How confident are you in the way you're raising your children? Now, this falls on both of us. I'll tell you what you do. You do the best you can. If you bring them to church, you teach them, teach them that faithfulness to God's house is the most important thing in their week. And you bring them to the house of the Lord. You don't just send them. You bring them to the house of the Lord. And you pray over them. And you do everything you can to head them in the right direction. They, all, they don't always stay that way when they get out of your house. But they'll never get away from how they were raised by mom and dad. I used that little illustration with the children a while ago. I've visited many prisons. I've been in, in uh, many facilities where grown men were, and you get them alone and get to talking to them and ask them, you know, who raised you, or, or they begin to tell you who raised them. 
and most of them had a godly mother or a grandmother that had raised them, and many of them did, and they say, Mama, Mama or Grandma, she's still praying for me. You, you, can, you can do the best you can. Sometimes they'll go astray, but they're in the hands of God after they get out of your hands. Amen? But you do your best, and God will do the rest. We should be confident as parents to train up our children in the way they should go. Amen? Also, we not only see that her, uh, we see she was confident and she believed God. And friend, that's the, that's the things that we need most in a mama, that just believe God. Now again, I, I love I love mamas. I love the ladies. I think y'all are, are the best thing that ever happened in creation is the mamas and the ladies. Us men, of course, if God had just created a whole race of men that couldn't procreate, we'd be in a mess, wouldn't we, guys? If we didn't have our if we didn't have our wives, we wouldn't have survived as a society long. If it wasn't for you ladies, because you're the ones that that keep us going most of the time. Amen? I want to tell you something. There's nothing better than a godly mother. Nothing better than a godly mother to raise their children in the way they should go. Let me give you a few oddities of parenting. And, and this is just some things that I've seen along the wayside of, of how parents raise their children. Discipline your children only when you lose your temper. Let them get away with anything until you're fed up with it. Then in the spirit of hostility and anger, let them have it. While you're getting mad, just let them have it. Now this is what you ain't supposed to do, but I'm, you know, this is what a lot of people do. Blow your top, holler, scream, yell, and clobber them. Really make a brawl out of it. And your children are going to get a real bang out of that. They're going to love that. Number two, don't ever make yourself too approachable to your children. If you make yourself too approachable to them, if you become too friendly with them, you might have to listen to them someday with a problem they've got. Now, I'm telling you this because I know that this is the way some people raise their children. I, can't, I mean, I see it and I can't believe it, but this is what they do. If you get too chummy, they want to talk things over with you and you've got more important things to do. Number three, if they've done anything wrong, don't let them forget it for at least four months. Keep reminding them of what they did wrong for four months. Now, they'll love you for that. No, they'll loathe you for that. Number four, Give your children all the money they want. Give them all the money they want. Don't make him do anything or her do anything to earn that money. How many of you had to work when you was a kid? Raise your hand if you got money. Now you're doing good. You say, well, I want better for my children. I do too, but I want them to learn to work. And so, you know, make them do things around the house and and uh, make them do some things for nothing, but let them do some things around the house to earn a little money. Teach them what it is to earn money. They'll appreciate it more if they earned it themselves. So give them all the spending money they want. Don't make them earn it. Large quantities of money, and I've seen this in, in people's lives that I've hired to work for me. Uh, large amounts of money will, will substitute for love. And after a while, all they're going to want is your money, and, and, uh, and uh, that's all they care about you is having your money. You say, preacher, that don't happen. Honest to me, you, you school teachers probably see it. A lot of you probably see it, but it does happen. People just flood them with money. Just give them all the money, give them all the nice things, and they grow up and think everything should be handed to them. They should get everything for free without having to work on it. Uh... Moms and dads, you all don't get together and how to discipline your children. You do it one way and daddy does it another. You think that's the right way to go? I don't believe so. But you got to, as parents, you got to raise your children uh, in the right way. You know why? 
Because if my young has done this, my young is to do this to me, and, and of course me and my wife was on the same page. They'd go ask mama if they could go do something, and mama would say no. Well, they'd ask me, and I'd say no. Well, they thought, well, we'd get around that, so they'd come and ask me. After they asked mama, and I'd say, what'd your mama tell you? No. Well, you're not going to go then. But see, sometimes, sometimes kids ask mama, mama say no, and they go ask daddy, and daddy say yes. That, that's real encouraging. That, that really keeps things straight, don't it? Moms and dads get together on raising your children. If you don't want them to go do something, they, man, both of you agree on it. And and uh, and if you don't know what to do, if it, if you come to you, dad, and say, Dad, I want to do such and such, and you don't know what to tell them, say, so go see mom. <laughs> Moms, you do the same thing. No, uh, you, you train up your children to, to love the Lord and serve the Lord and teach them to honor you. If you love them enough, they'll honor you. You don't beat, chil you don't beat children into honoring and loving you. You love your children, you spoil them rotten. You spoil your young as rotten. But in all the spoiling that you do, all the loving you can do, I don't believe you can hug a child enough. I don't believe you can hug on your children enough, and I don't believe you can tell them you love them enough. I don't, I don't believe you can do that uh, too much. Some people say you can't. I don't think you can, because I tried my best. It didn't hurt a thing. Amen? But you love on your children. You spoil your children. Mamas, you grab them up. You hug them. You love them every chance you get. And you teach them the right principles of life, and you teach them right from wrong. From wrong. And I'll tell you something. God will use them for his glory if you'll train up a child in the way they should go. One more thing. Never let the young'uns think for themselves. Don't ever let them do that. They might decide something on their own. Uh, they don't have the ability to think for themselves, so don't ever let them think for themselves. They might make a, a, a decision... Right or wrong, they might make a decision that affects them in some way or the other. you got to learn to make decisions. How many of you have always made perfect decisions in your life? Raise your hand. Boy, I was hoping somebody would so I could come and get some counseling. How many of you have made some bad decisions in your life? Now, what did it do for you? Did it help you the next time that same thing come up? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't. I don't say you ought to make bad decisions, but you, you, you're going to do it. You're going to make some bad decisions, but you learn from those things, and that's how you learn. Now, you, when your children are coming along, always treat them with suspicion. What are you into now? They got real quiet. What, what are they doing? Don't yell at them. Just get up and go see what they're doing. I yell at the dog when it gets quiet. But I, young as you get up and go see what they're doing. So don't always, don't, don't ever, don't ever treat them uh, other than with suspicion because you never know what the sneaky little characters are up to. Now you do all these things. Now agreeably, y'all agree with me, this is a terrible way to raise children. Am I right? Now, I hope, you do, I hope you've got that right. I hope you don't tell them. You, oh, my goodness, what if you've got this wrong? What if you think that I'm telling you this is the way to raise children? No, it's the way you don't do it. Amen? But now, if you do raise your children this way, they if they turn out well, if they turn out good, it won't be your fault. It'll be a miracle of God. So remember these things. Mamas love your children. Children, everybody, all you little kids look up here at the preacher. Y'all looking at me? Love your mama. Love your mama. Love your mama. You hug her every day. You give her a kiss on the cheek every day. You go out and pick her some flowers every day that you can. Love your mama because your mother loves you. All this has to do with godly living, with godly mothers. Some people don't love their children because they don't love God. 
Some people don't know how to godly love their children because they don't know the Lord. Men and women, if you're here and you don't know God today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus died on the cross for you. He shed his blood for you that you might be able to go to heaven when you leave this world. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And if you're here today lost without God, rest assured, friend, if you leave this world today, you'll die and go to hell lost without God for eternity. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Blessed I pray. God, I pray right now you'd help us, Lord, in the altar call. God, if you touched anyone's heart today, God, I pray that they be receptive, Lord, to your convicting power. Lord, that they might come to know thee if they're lost and if under conviction, Lord, of the Spirit of God for un an ungodly lifestyle, God, may you touch them with the power of God that they might turn to thee in Jesus' name. Amen.